go. Benjamin Allen. Yo, how's it going? What's up, dog? Chilling. How are you doing? Dude, uh, you know, I, I the one thing, I, the one answer I hate when people do that, when I ask them, they're like, living the dream, baby, living the dream. It's like, nah, I don't know. Other than that, I'm good, though. How about oh. you? I'm doing good. Hopefully this light isn't uh, no, drowning you're good, out bro. my you're beautiful good. face. Good. No, you're good. good. We can see it. Look great. So, cool. dude, um, uh, thanks for being on. I know, like, and this is part of what we're talking about right now, but I know you're working uh, a, a nine to five, probably more like a nine to six, because it sounds like you usually work more than than the regular hours. Um, so let me just give these guys a little bit of backstory, a little bit of context, and then I'm going to go into it, okay? And we're going to be respectful of your time, because I know you got to get back to working for the man, and I know you're... <laughs> passive income because that day is coming where you can tell them to go eat rock right don't tell them i'm on this call oh yeah they don't <laughs> yeah you don't I hope you don't have like an alexa or an echo or whatever they probably know no i don't it's all good <laughs> so guys um ben I just, just a quick intro with ben um ben well actually i'm gonna have to i'm gonna need your help a little bit but you just landed your very first deal like it was like a week and a half two weeks ago and give us the specs on the deal yeah, so it was uh, 250 a week, so $1,000 a month. Um, so it was the, the minimum I'm willing to go for is 1000 a month. Um, oh. Three-month contracts. Uh, I probably could have gone for a six-month contract, but I was just gauging the temperature of, of the business owner, and I thought three months was appropriate, and he completely agreed to that. There was no hesitation for that, so really oh, happy about yeah. that. Uh, comfortable sharing the niche? Yeah, concrete. Ah! Concrete, old faithful, baby. Old faithful. Yeah. I love it, dude. Yeah. In the Houston area, I can even share the area. Houston area, Houston, Texas. I love Texas, man. Texas is a great state to go into. You know what's funny about Texas? Like I've I've actually not, I've, I've built like one or two sites in Texas, but it was in the wrong niche. And so I kind of had this weird like taste in my mouth with Texas. I don't have as many sites as I have. I don't have any currently right now that are in Texas, I don't think. Okay. Interesting. Wild, yeah, yeah. Like, huge state. It never shut down during the pandemic. Like it, it, all the signs look like it's a great state. I just have never done it. So um, that just goes to show you like there's money to be made everywhere. Yeah. I love it. And I love Texas because it's so big. So there's okay. so many cities that you can go into. Yep. So it's like, it, it's, it's a due diligence dream. Texas as, totally. a, as a, as a state. So you it's awesome. Geek out. You just totally geek out on due diligence. So uh, yeah. I want to ask you, we're going to get into the specifics and I really want to angle this call and this interview about how you're able to manage building passive income, doing deals while you're still like still somehow doing this job, which I know, you know, hopefully at some point you can break out of, but what was the most attractive thing to you about rank and rent when you've heard of the business model what was the thing that you're like, oh, that's that's the thing that like really speaks to me? Which which element of it? Yeah. So for me, uh, I want to live my life with the three freedoms, time, location, and financial freedom. Those are the three freedoms. Uh, most people only have one of those. They only have time freedom, but they don't have financial or location freedom, or they have a, you know, a combination, but they don't actually have all three in their life. And so what spoke to me was that rank and rec could help me achieve all three of those plus more, right? right? I can achieve the time freedom I want uh, when I get to a certain level. I can achieve the financial freedom I want uh, and the location freedom I want. I, so all three freedoms are accomplished uh, with rank and rent digital real estate. And for that reason, it's I'm all in. So, so let me ask you this. I, I like to dig in a little bit. Why were those three three things a big deal to you? I, like they make sense to me because those are the things that are important to me. But like, is there a specific reason why those are the three things that like needed to be checked? Or is it just like, like are these things that since you were 20 years old, you're like, I really want these things? Or did they, did you read them in a book? Did you hear them from a mentor? Like what are the th reasons why those are the three things? Yeah, great question. Uh, I will personally, I have a girlfriend who lives overseas at the moment. Um, and, uh, my motivation, uh, well, I've always wanted these three freedoms, but my motivation to get this and accelerate the process really, really increased, um, when I started dating her because I met her in the U S but now she's, you know, she lives in Poland and she's in Portugal right now. And so I'm like, well, the only way that I'm really going to have to see her is if I marry her or if, you know, I figure oh, out some way to go be able to visit. Is she Polish? Yeah. Bro, 
something about that area, bro. They, they produce some hotties, dude. Yeah. And by the way, yeah, for anyone that's like, oh my gosh, he's married. If my wife was sitting right there, I would say, I say this kind of stuff all the time. It's just a fact, yo. Like, so shout out to all the Polish girls. Just saying. 100%. Anyway, yes, I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not biased or anything, but I agree. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just facts here. So we're all thinking I'm going to say it. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, go on. So you guys started dating in the U.S. She moved there and now now keep going. Yeah, she moved back there because she was here for a couple uh, for, for a year um, as an au pair. And she moved back there. And now it's like, well, you know, the only way I'm going to really be able to have the freedom to see her whenever I want um, is either marry her, which I might do, who knows, or, um, you know, create the the freedom to do so the the financial freedom to play for to pay for plane tickets and the time freedom to be able to be like, all right, I'm, I'm going on, I'm, we're meeting, we're meeting in Germany the next week, let's go or, or, or we're, we're meeting in Paris, you know, we're meeting, we're meeting in, you know, in, in freaking, you know, Spain, Barcelona, you know, like that, that's, that's, that's the dream for me. So dude, this was so cool about this, right? Like everybody's got a different thing, right? Everyone, some people are like, I just want to have enough time to go sp- like go fishing with my dad every single Sunday. Cause he's getting old. Right. Other people's like, I want to go travel the world with my family. And you're like, dude, I just want to be able to like call up my girl, meet her in Europe and like go on a two week thing. And I can still be making money. I can still do my deals and I'm not stuck. Where are you based at right now? Denver. Stuck in Denver where there's 17 feet of snow and it smells like freaking skunk. Just kidding. Shout out to the legal <laughs> marijuana out there. <laughs> That's so true. I, I actually, I actually love being out here. I moved no, here I've actually, it's funny. Yeah. My brother, my brother married a girl from Colorado Springs. Everyone I've ever talked to that like has been to Colorado, Denver, Colorado Springs. Love it. I just had this, I did, I just, I had to say something about the snow because I, I loathe the snow, but people that live there love it. Most of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, but and my I, point bro yeah. is it's just cool because I've said this before. It doesn't matter what you're trying to achieve, right? Whatever it is, getting out of debt, you just want to be able to have that, like you're saying, hey, I want to be able to call her up and just go. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's like, I want to build a real estate, uh, an empire of real estate. Maybe it's all of it. Great. You can do that with this vehicle. And I know when I say that, it's like, ah, this guy's drinking his own Kool-Aid. Yep. And it's really good, actually. I think, you know how Elon Musk was like, they should put cocaine back in Coca-Cola? Yeah. This Kool-Aid's got it, bro. The D-R-E, Dre, has got the cocaine in it. Or I better say, cocaina, so old Zox doesn't get mad, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the and, adrenaline rush I get from hooking a business owner or from getting a lead on the phone, it's just, ah, I live off of it. There's, you know? a, reason, there's a reason we call it digital drug dealing, dog. Yeah. It, bro. Yep. Okay, let's dive into your freaking. Um, well, I want to ask you about your schedule and everything else. So, um, tell these guys what you do right now. Like, what's your full time nine to five? You're putting in, you know, I'm putting in my time, punching my clock, like paying the bills. What are you doing for that? Yeah. So, just to be clear, I don't actually like hate my nine to five, uh, or my right. nine to six. I love the people I work with. I love the company, but it just doesn't give me the freedom I want. So, um, I uh, I'm very very motivated. I'm kind of like. I was kind of a masochist when I chose my job. I wanted to choose something that I didn't particularly enjoy. I enjoy the company and the people, but not the necessarily the day-to-day oh, work. Look, look. What's because, a bro, I'm not going to so, pretend I know that word. That's a cool word, though. What's a masochist? Someone who like who like deliberately wants pain. So that's not a that's different because a stoic is somebody that endures pain, and a masochist seeks it out. I, well, actually, I guess I guess you would say I, I'm a stoic, but the reason I'm seeking out the pain is because I want. To, I want it to motivate me to do digital real estate. That's so crazy. if I if I loved my job, it would be harder for me to yeah, allocate fair. the time to digital real estate, right? Okay, fair. So uh, it's actually kind of a weird backwards concept. I, I do I do tech uh, tech support for uh, for a software company, cool. um, and so like I, it, the day to day job is like meh, you know. But the people I work with are great. The company I work with is good. But cool. uh, essentially, like I chose a job that I wasn't really that into on purpose. Because I was like, shit, like, I don't want to get comfortable, you know, and it, it's a weird mindset. Everyone says like, all right, like try and find a job that you're actually like, okay with. It's like, you know, I actually think that you should find a job that you absolutely hate. Because if you, if your motivation is to try and leave that job, then by hating the job, you're going to leave it quicker. 
you're going to find, you're going to figure that's, out a way, right? That's an interesting perspective and I like it. Um, so how, let's talk about how you're able, because tell me like, so your hours are like nine to six, right? Yeah. So are you, what motivated you to just get started? Like I hear so many people and they're like, I need to get started, but like my schedule just doesn't permit. So I'm going to start next year when my boss said I can get more freedom. It's like, yeah, that's not going to happen either. You're probably going to be pregnant or some other thing's going to come up by then. Right. It's never a good time. So what motivated you to just like go for it, even though you're like, Hey, timing is not perfect. I I have a ton of work I got to do, but like, I'm just going to figure this out and make it work with the time that I do have. Like how, what motivated you to just get started, even though you had not that much time? Um, Well, I think that deeper motivation just goes back to me wanting those three freedoms. I think that's, that's what drives me every day, being able to to travel and see my girl whenever I want. Um, But I think, I think the ultimate like answer to logistically why I thought this would work is because um, I was noticing that I was wasting time in the mornings and the evenings, just doing stupid stuff that I could easily replace with doing the work. So, uh, it did require a mindset shift for me. And I think the mindset piece is huge with this. I think it's like slept on in a lot of like business models, but I think that the mindset piece is huge, which is why your calls, not to toot your own, not to toot your own horn, but your, your live calls are awesome, dude, because the mindset stuff is what you focus on. Yes, sir. And I think that's like, that's like key because for me, it was, I had to shift my mindset from not from like, how can I find the time, but how can I make the time? Like, like, how can I, how can I actually make the time? Is it getting up earlier? Is it sacrificing my weekends with my boys? Is it, you know, like what painful things do I need to give up? And that was really the the mindset shift. It's so interesting how that works. Um, what is it? Is it, is it like Pareto's law or whatever that says you will, you will like, you will take all the time that you're given to do an activity as a human, you'll take it. Right. And so it's, it's so funny. Like I've had this thought, um, multiple times throughout my career. I'm like, Hey, I look at people that are single like you. And I'm like, dude, it would be so like, if I, if I didn't have like these responsibilities, like I had to spend time with my kids and my wife and all this stuff. And obviously it's not had to, but like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, like I need to, I'm a dad and I'm a, whatever. But if I was single, man, I would be tearing it up. Imagine where I would be. I always had these thoughts. And then, but you know, what's funny when my wife goes out of town and I'm by myself, I end up golfing or I end up like not waking up on time and hitting the gym for two hours or, or whatever, and just pissing away time. And so the, my point being is like, I think whatever time you are, you have is the time that you're going to fill. And so it's just what you said. It's about creating time. There is time. Every person that's watching this, you have time that you could carve out. I promise you, whether it's Netflix, whether it's your boys, it's like, you don't need to go to the bar Friday and Saturday, (laughs) just cut it out on Friday and you can go on Saturday. Cool. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. Really good point. Um, I think it's mainly just an excuse. And I think it's the same, you know, with like sales, everyone's like, yeah, I just, the site's not ranking. So I don't want to go sell it yet. That's what everyone said. Right. But really it was just a cover up because they didn't want to pick up the phone. And then I came along and I was like, actually, you don't need to wait for it to rank. It's like, well, there's no excuses. People started picking up the phone and here we are getting deals. Right. Exactly. Like today, for example, I, I hooked a business owner in Florida, uh, which I'm really excited about for concrete again, concrete. Um, but I hooked him today and, uh, and I was, I honestly had to like psych myself up to make the call. Cause I was just like, I don't want to do this. And I was making excuses. And I was like, Oh, what's, you know, what, how does my like, like ticket queue look at work? Like what, what, what other work <laughs> tasks can I do that aren't related to digital real estate? And I was like, wait a second. No, 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 no. no. It'll take me literally five minutes yep. to call a business owner, five minutes of my time. Like it's not an excuse. So I pick up the phone, hook the business owner, and I'm happy now. There first, you go. Call? first call? Uh, so I called him yesterday, but I had uh, my Denver area code. So what I did was I used call rail to call him with a local area code. And he finally picked up today because he didn't pick up yesterday. So, and, well, and that's just what I'm saying is like, I think in that similar way, which shout out to you for like learning, that's a muscle that you have to build because it's not easy. Like you're a human, like you want to be lazy. You don't want to, you, you want to resist pain, right? That's how we survive. That's how we learn to survive yeah. is like avoiding pain. Um, but my point is like, similarly to like how people avoid cold calling, 
I think 99% of people that are out there that know they should be doing something, know they should be jumping in. They're using every excuse in the book of why now is not a good time and why they should do it later. Oh, holidays are coming up. Oh, we're going to be traveling. Oh, little Joey, he's just young and we want the, the we want to spend quality time. Guess what? You either got to do it now or you got to do it later. But if you don't, if you're not careful, little Joey's not even going to see you because you're going to be working all day at a nine to five, punching the clock, barely making ends meet, doing the freaking shout out to Ke is it Kendrick talks about syrup sandwiches. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Have you exactly. ever had a syrup sandwich, bro? I, I've never had a syrup sandwich before. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's, yeah. it's absolutely putrid sounding. Um, I've also got yeah. friends that used to do like, like their moms would give them like mayonnaise sandwiches, which by the way, I, I feel I cannot do mayonnaise, which is just a thing. And I think it, I usually call it mayonnaise. I don't know why I'm calling it mayonnaise being proper, but anyway, side note. Um, I used to have spaghetti sandwiches. That was kind of weird. That's kind of a, like, I've never had that. That does make me kind of like eh, a little bit, but yeah. I've heard that I've heard more people doing that than just you. So that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. okay. Um, the other question I wanted to ask you related to that was, um, so I asked you about your schedule and then, um, okay, here's what I was going to ask you. Did you have to, did like, did you have to go and get like any kind of change of your schedule? Did you have to like negotiate a work at home deal? Like, were you, did you have to do any of that or did you just literally work within what you already had? So I'm really lucky that my work is fully from home, fully remote, um, which is which is great. Um, I have an office with three screens, which is also the game. You got to have multiple monitors sure. to crush it. It's For so sure. nice. So I have an office standing desk. I have the full thing. So mm -hmm. that's really I'm really fortunate about that. For people who commute, uh, I still think it's not an excuse because and I'll tell you why. I wake up at 6 a.m. every morning and I do three hours on my business before I start at night. I love it. So like, there you go. Three hours a day, like is what it is, what it took me to get my first deal. And like, I'm not working eight hours on this a day. I'm, you know, people think, oh, like, you know, I'm, I'm working a nine hour job and then I got to do another eight hours to like build it. No, 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 no. Three hours a day. And that's, that's what it took. So, and that's and, because you were focusing on sales though, instead of being like, oh, I'm going to rank a website in two years. Yeah. Later, now it's like, oh my gosh, now we got nothing. And we got some, it's 100%. like. So you were focusing for the, it's, it's about focusing on the right things during those three hours, right? A hundred percent, the right things. And also like, obviously in the beginning, you know, it was a little slower, but now, now I know exactly the process and I can just, I can put up an ad in five minutes and I can go into an area and it's now it's like, it's a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, three hours a day in the morning. And look, I had to sacrifice like four weekends with my boys, which was emotionally difficult for me, but was worth it. And I look back at it now, I'm like totally worth it because the amount of time I'll be able to spend with them on the other side is, you know. You're going to sacrifice a couple of trips with your boys and a couple of games and a couple of bar trips. But like you said, dude, if you grind this out and get buy your freedom back, dude, you could go every weekend. And you're exactly. going to be the one that's like, yo, let's stay longer. Let's stay longer. I got nothing to do in the morning. Like, let's stay longer, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, because, because I live in Denver, the mountains are a giant playground. You know, you're in Utah, you know, it's like, yeah, there's yeah. all these outdoor activities to go. And so my boys were always like, oh, let's go hiking. Oh, let's do this thing. Oh, let's do that thing. I'm like, nah, like, I just can't. I gotta, I gotta build this business, you know? And what's all awesome is that, they're true friends because they understood. They're like, dude, I respect that. That's cool. You know, I respect that. Let me know when you got that deal, you know? And yeah. so, yeah. And like, they were happy when I got it. So it's like, you know, it, it, it's people understand, especially if they're true friends, they're going to understand that, you you know, you're sacrificing some time to, to, to pursue your, your goals and your dreams. So. So I know someone's going to ask this question, by the way, if anybody has questions uh, for Ben, please get them in the queue right now. We got to, I'm going to let him off in 10 minutes sharp because I know he's got, you know, he might be called back on whatever, but dude, I know someone's going to ask this. You spent three hours this morning on your business. How did you spend it? Like tell like, Dude, it's so crazy how much you can get done in three hours. If you just put on your headphones, turn on some rain music or some freaking like focus music and just, dude, you can get a lot done in three hours. I don't think people realize that. In fact, I would argue most people that work eight hours 
probably didn't get as much as you got done this morning in three hours if you if you did what I thought you did or what I think you did. So tell us, walk us through an average, you know, six to nine a.m. for Ben Allen, aka the Denver Savage. Yeah, and also also keep in mind that I'm like I'm not perfect. I still procrastinate like yeah. most people. <laughs> so so even within that three hours, like not a full three hours of work, but it's still I'm just trying to make a point here. Like yep. even with the procrastination, I was able to achieve it. Right. Yeah. So. But, but yeah, so, but basically the way that it works is I, I would get up. Um, I have, uh, I have my, uh, basically I'm a part of the, a, an, an accountability group in digital landlords, which is awesome. So I have an accountability tracker up and I say, what do I need to get done this week? What did I promise myself and the group that I would get done? Accountability is huge for me. So I look at that and I say, okay, what's the number one most important task? So this morning um, I was actually get, trying to get a GMB for my current client that I just got. So that was a little bit, separate to what I was doing earlier. But earlier this week, I put up an ad in Somerville, South Carolina for concrete. Oh. So I love Carolinas. I, I saw a video that you put about how you love the Carolinas too. Uh, yeah. with, uh, Rankin I, I just made a new one. You'll have to watch it about me going to the Carolinas. It's funny you say that. So, and I have sites in Somerville, not in concrete, great city. Now everyone's going into Somerville. I know. Right? <laughs> There's already another person in it, but I don't care. It's fine. Um, but so, yeah, so, so your whole thing is like, you wake up, you sit down at your computer, you're like, all right, what is the, the most important task? Now, here's the question. Here's the deeper question. Um, it's a trick question because I've trained you on this. So I'm hoping you answer this correctly. How do you define important? How do you select that important task? What do you, what is your criteria for most important? Uh, whatever is going to make me money the fastest. Okay. Love it. Or, or in said in another way, move the needle, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, same thing. same thing. And it comes down. We and there, I don't know if you caught this live. I don't, I don't think you were in the group when you did this, but you need to check this out in Digital Landlords. We talked about doing what is um in what is necessary. Let's see, what was the term? It's Tim Ferriss did it. It's basically like doing what is. I can't remember exactly how he put it, but basically it's the difference between doing the things that are like fires and doing the things that are going to move the needle. And there's an exact phrase that he used. And I, I named the live this. I just can't remember, but dude, that's it. And, and when you figure out how simple that is, you, you t look at, dude, this is the formula for those of you that are working nine to five jobs, right? If, if you don't have the luxury of working from home, cool, do it like he's doing, wake up or stay up late. Take the time that you can, cut out the BS, cut out the unnecessary, and spend that time doing needle moving activities, things that are going to get you closer to your goal. And I'm telling you right now, if you think that is getting better at backlinking or building a little bit better landing page, it's not. It's about picking up the freaking phone, getting a good area, and going and getting in those reps and getting credit cards, asking for money. Until you're at 10K a month, you do not need to be sitting there sweating over, oh, is this a good backlink? Is this good? Like you need to be focusing on the sale, which I know you don't want to hear because you would like to sit in your little cavern and not have to do anything that's actually like uncomfortable and think that you're working, but that's not work. Work is actually doing the thing that moves the needle. There, I said it. And Ben, you get that. Yeah, I mean, I was honestly, I was almost thinking of quitting rank and rent before I found rent and rank because it was... I had had four websites. One of them, I ended up with a paper lead client, but I had no idea how to sell it. So it was paper lead. Um, and then I found you and I was like, all right, this, there's a much better way to do this. Um, but yeah, I was, I was so dismotivated because I wasn't, <clears throat> it was taking so long for the sites to rank and I wasn't seeing the progress. I wasn't making money. I wasn't doing anything to actually make the money that I needed to make. So um, now I'm like, wait a second, I can rinse and repeat this. And it's much quicker than waiting. Like I was I was doing rank rent for a year and then I finally made my first like actual money because paper lead was like a hundred bucks a month or whatever, it wasn't that much. I made my first actual money last month. Well, this month, last week, yeah. Isn't it so much more exciting when you, like, how much more, let me say bearable. How much more bearable is it to build a website when you're like, I'm already getting paid on this thing? Yeah, so much better. Because so cause much better, lot, yeah. A lot of us have like watched my free training or bought another program or bought a Udemy and or, or a course or Udemy or however. And we're like, oh, we're building the site. And it's like, you don't have any money coming in. It's just expenses. But when we do it this way, we go rent, then rank. 
we know we have money. We know we have a client and we're just like, we're just building this product that's already sold. It's so exciting. It's so fun. It's like, it's like the pre-orders or these like, um, what's the app where you do like crowdfunding where you go, go, uh, is it, what is it where you crowdfund stuff? Go fund me. No, is it, is it? No, go, no, it's the so. one where they're like, yo, check out this prototype. Everyone. Hey, Kickstarter. 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 It's that's like, right. of course, that's exciting. You're like, I have $400,000 of backing. Let's go make a freaking awesome product, right? Yeah. Anyway, okay, let's jump into a couple questions real quick. So I know I'm going to be respectful of your time. Let's go real quick, dude. We got some good ones here. I have to shout out to somebody that just said, um, uh, we, I, don't, I can't go that far back, but I wish I could. Let's see. Um, Okay. John Brown says, if you can't afford the churro at Disneyland, there's no reason to go. Dude, that's so true. My wife would agree so much with that. Oh, I love it. And then uh, Koa Doe says he walks around the house in a bathrobe. Shout out. Make sure that's a Versace bathrobe if you really want to ham it up. Okay. Uh, Chris says just closed two clients at 4k a month. Chris Bain, let's go, dude. Whoa, yeah, he's he is cruising, man. Shout that out, is a fatty with a ph. Oh man, okay, not uh, Kevin says not heard of SM, Nick. Uh, do I know what that is? It's probably some phrase, and he's saying it way I don't know, but clarify there, Kevin. Okay, let's see if we got any questions. Herman says, y'all are the reason my state is building so much shit. <laughs> Probably is. He must be in uh, in the Texas. Carolinas. Oh, the Carolinas. Yeah, either one. <laughs> Jason says he lives in the Charleston area. I love it. And then uh, Jason. Okay, so yeah, they're both there. Okay. Gabriel Dunn says, first, do what is necessary, then do what is possible. And before you know it, you are doing the impossible. Okay. Shout out to that, for, that phrase. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Josh says, how do you, he says yard free leads while at work, but I'm guessing he's saying, how do you pass free? Leads? How do you, how do you live transfer free leads while you're at work? Do you absolutely break? No. Yeah. So I actually just have, I have a separate phone. That's my, my lead phone. Essentially it's an old phone that I just put a new SIM card in and I pay 20 bucks a month. And I have, I route all of my numbers to this. Okay. And because my job, like I'm, I'm on meetings sometimes, but I'm not on meetings all the time. Okay. Uh, I can just, I can just pick up a lead and just, it takes literally five minutes to transfer a lead and do the live transfer. Josh. So yeah, yeah it's, it, you're overthinking it. And here's what else people don't like, just because it's a live transfer doesn't mean you need to answer it live. Yes. Uh, if you, if you, I've missed calls before. Um, because I was on a meeting. So if you're, if you're at a job, if you're at like an office and you're not allowed to do this, then, you know, it's fine. Uh, set a time. And, you know, when you get home, right when you get home from work, be like, Oh, uh, yay. Sorry. I was, no, we are uh, business owners out on a job. Um, what can I, how can I help you? What, what would you like? Oh, I want a driveway done. Cool. Let me just quickly get the business owner on the line so he can get you a lead, uh, that, that, that quote, boom, do the live transfer. So you can call back these leads. Um, obviously like it's ideal to get them live, but, uh, but I, I, I've had people answer quote forms, you know, a lot of quote forms come in on the, on the site. And so I can just call them back that way later. So there's, there's, there's options. Yeah, totally. And I think that's a misconception. People think you have to answer it live. Guys, I, I don't answer mine live. I batch it. I let them go to voicemail. And then you know what I do is I call them twice because the first time they're going to think it's spam. The second time they're going to go, who is this? And then as soon as they answer, I go, hey, sorry to bug you. I'm calling you from my cell phone. Right. Hey, this is this is Las Vegas concrete. The, uh, Nick with Las Vegas concrete. I'm calling you from my cell phone. Sorry for the weird area code. I knew you thought it would be spam. That's why I'm calling you twice. Josh just clarified and said he can't have his phone in the office. So Josh, here's what I would do. Batch it, bro. Batch it at night. Do it when you're off work. Do it during your lunch break. Do it during your, your, your breaks. You don't have to answer it live and you can do outbound. So it's happened to me. I was on, I was on a couple of meetings uh, a couple of weeks ago and I got a couple of calls and during that time, I just, I just later on answered them. So it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. he said that was, uh, that was sufficient. He said, thank you. Okay. I'm going to let you answer one more question and I'll let you hop off. I'll keep answering questions. Okay. Okay, um, ba, ba, ba. let's go with this one. 
Okay, this is Herman. I'm a guy who likes to know my odds. So with rank, then so with rent, then rank, as long as you pick the, the right niche in the right city, you can always expect leads with ads. Um, not always, you know, even if you do do your due diligence properly, there's it still might, it still might, you still might not get leads in, but that's what's beautiful about it is that you will know that that's not a good city to go into for sure once you do the ad. So, so due diligence makes it like 80% of the time you're going to be fine. Right. But there's still, I, I mean, and this is like a, a ratio that I'm from my head, from my experience, but maybe you have a different ratio, but like from my experience, like most of the time if you do due diligence, you're going to be fine, but you never know. There's, there might be other factors that you don't consider in your due diligence that you just can't consider. Like, um, you know, demographic factors, uh, income factors, um, you know, storms, weird weather, things that you don't know about that could affect lead flow. So that's, what's great about this business model is that the way that you do it, Nick, is that like you put the ad up, you now know, all right, this is a success or not. You turn the ads off. If it's not keep the ads rolling. If it is, I've had to turn ads off in an area before and it was fine. Cause I actually didn't spend that much money. It was like, I spent like 80 bucks and I was like, all right, this is going nowhere. So that's a really good point is it's like, Herman, I would ask you this. Would you rather spend a hundred bucks and know in a week that it's not a good area? Or would you rather spend six months and 500 to a thousand dollars and six months of your, of your lifetime energy effort to find out the same thing? Exactly. Yep. Right. So and with I, that, I got a piece. <laughs> yeah. Hey bro. I, hey, real quick, Ben, I appreciate you, bro. Um, I just want to know what, what's the goal, dude. What, what do you want to be at? Uh, what are you going to be at by the end of the year? By the end of the year, uh, two thousand dollars a month is 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 the goal. So adding another deal by the end of the year. Let's do it, bro. One more deal. Okay, I appreciate you being on, and everybody, thank Ben. And I'm gonna stay on for answer questions. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Okay.